In this video, I'm going to be having a look at editing the metadata for each of the different types of media, and we're going to be starting off with movies. So I'm just going to be covering the differences between all the different types of media because they are quite similar, or there are a few similarities in it. So yeah, let's get started. So to access the edit menu, you can go and click on the little pencil icon here, or you can actually click on the movie and you can go to the edit button at the top here. And that will bring you into this little window here that's going to let you edit the metadata. And just as a little note before we go into it, um, if you go to the three dots at the top here and you go to fix match, that's how you can actually fix any movies that have been incorrectly matched. There has been one or two films that I um, added in the past where we got um, maybe the second part of the film or it just got the wrong film. So it barely happens that it gets the wrong film, but if it does, you can just search and... Um, basically added different films. I mean, this film's correctly added, but usually if it's a film that's similarly named, you will be able to find the name on the list here. But for now, it's the right match, so I'm gonna leave it as it is, but it's just good to know that. So anyway, let's go into edits. So starting from the top, title is obviously the title. Sort title is um, how the film's gonna be sorted. So for example, I could put a Z at the beginning of this, as you can see here, and I could do save changes. And then when I go into movies, it will show it at the end because it's sorted um, under Z, um, so, which is obviously at the end of the alphabet. So if I go here again and I take away the Z and put it back to how it was before and save changes, as you can see, it moves it back to the beginning. So yeah, that's how sort title works. Original title is for movies that have translated titles. For example, the French film, The Triplets of Bulleville, that I have in my personal library. It's actually got a French title because it's a French film, but that's the translated title. So under original title is where you're going to be able to put the title in the other language. And moving down, there's originally available, which is when it was released, rating, content, all of that sort of stuff. All these are brought down um, through agents, so you shouldn't have to change any of these. So you can leave it as it is. Again, moving over to tags. Again, these are all brought down through agents, so you shouldn't have to change any of these. But there is one section at the bottom that you can change, which is collections. And under this, you can do something like Disney because it's a Disney film and you can have like um, a whole load of Disney films in a collection or you can have maybe animation. I mean, there's not really too much use doing this because you can just filter films um, by what studio they are or whether they're animation or whether they're um, sci-fi or something like that. So. There isn't really too much use for collections, but if you've got a specific collection, like maybe you want to have a collection for a certain person or something, you can have them, you can put um, basically their name or whatever in this collection um, area and put it for different films too, and then you can search by collections, which um, I'll go over when I'm filtering movies. <clears throat> and actually one thing I want to know um, before I go is, as you can see, because I changed the title, this little icon here has um, gone orange and that basically means that this um, metadata is locked in place. So even if you refresh the film or you um, pull down more metadata for it, it's not going to change the sort title because you've manually changed it. If you want it to be changed um, when you refresh the movie, which I don't know why you would, be, would want that to happen, because you've gone and manually changed it, you can uncheck that and it will put the sort title back to its default when you refresh the metadata. But if you want to keep it the same, you can um, check that and it will go orange, so it won't change. Going to sharing, um, you actually need a Plex Pass to um, do anything under sharing, but basically all that's under sharing is an area to put in labels that can be used later on when you're sharing your content, which I'm going to be going over in the future. Going over to poster, um, you can, as you can see, there's some posters that Plex pulls down as well as some other agents pull down, such as the fanart.tv site that I showed in the previous video. So I usually for Disney movies like to use this sort of poster. There's this Disney Classics collection where there's basically um, like the, these kind of nice looking posters for each of the Disney Classics so I like to use those and it kind of keeps them consistent too but there's all these posters so whichever one you use is up to you so I'm going to choose that and it's usually good to do save changes after um, selecting a poster or a background I find just um, because I find that sometimes things can go wrong if you select a background and a poster together and you change it and then you do save changes afterwards sorry so under poster um, I'm actually gonna add my own poster this time you can again add a poster here but I'm gonna add my own just to show you how it works so at the top 
For both poster as well as background, there's choose an image which will bring up a dialog box like this where you can choose an image and add it. There's drag and drop which is just saying that you can drag and drop an image and there's enter a URL which um, is if you want to enter a URL. So this image is actually in downloads so I'm going to go to downloads and I'm going to drag and drop it. And then if you go to save changes and you go here, as you see the new backgrounds there and the new posters there. So for, as for posters and backgrounds there isn't the same lock icon as there is there but these won't refresh when you refresh the method eater. They should stay as they are. And it's the same for backgrounds too. If you've added a background, it's not going to change it. Under info, it's just showing where the actual file is stored. So um, this will be different, obviously, depending on where you store it. You, there isn't any options here. It's just showing where it's stored and what the actual name of it is. So that's it. You can click Save Changes. And as you can see, it's done. So we're going to go to Music. And this is a bit more complicated because there's artists as well as album, as well as songs. So let's start from the top with artists. So we're going to go into Ed Sheeran here. And as you can see, there's already some metadata here, um, such as a description and um, a picture frame and things like that. So we're going to be able to change this all, obviously, though. So let's go into edit. And as you can see, um, this is pretty much the same. There's the description. There's the sort artist, which is the same as sort title, as well as the artist. Under tags, it's pretty much the same thing again. All this is pulled down from the internet, but you can do the same collections as you could do with movies. There's posters, which if you want to have a different picture of the artist, you can drag and drop that in here. Or if there isn't one, then you can add one. And as you can see for background, there isn't actually a background. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add in a URL this time. We're not going to just drag and drop an image. So what you can do is if I go here, there's a picture here that I want to add as the background. So I'm just going to copy the URL and go here, then paste it. And as you can see, it's as simple as that. It adds it and it's right here. Um, one thing I want to just note though is if the URL doesn't go directly to the image, it won't add it. Um, I mean, this sounds obvious, but if it's one of those websites where um, when you go to the link, it brings you to this download page or something like that, those aren't going to work. You're going to have to you're going to have to download those images and then upload them. Um, to Plex, you're not going to be able to just add the URL because um, I'm just speaking from experience, it doesn't work. So we're going to save changes and go back in and then we're going to go to advanced and album sorting by library default. This is basically how you want the albums to be sorted. So um, library default is if you go to library and you go to edit. This is how by default the albums are sorted it's by the newest album first. So whichever album the artist part of the newest. So basically what this is saying is whatever the library default is, that's what's that's um, how the albums are going to be sorted. But you can still change it to oldest first or by name, which will do it in alphabetical order. And then once you're done with that, you can save changes. And now before we go into the album, I just want to note that it does also show similar artists, which are based on um, the metadata here. As you can see, similar artists here, it shows Passenger as a similar artist. So whatever artists you've got in there, you, they're going to be showing under here if you've got music by them too. And it also shows the concert too, which is pulled down again from the internet. So going into album, as you can see, this is under the album. So let's go to edit. And yeah, this information at the top is pretty self-explanatory. It's like the other ones, but there's actually nothing under record label or review for Plex Free. Plex Premium will bring down metadata for these two if you've got it set to pull down metadata for them. Um, but you can still add in your own thing, so some record label, let's just say, and do a review. This is a pretty nice album, dot, dot, dot. And as you can see, they're locked in by default, so if we do save changes, it's going to show, yeah, this is a pretty nice album, and it doesn't actually show the record company anywhere, but that's it, that's still in there anyway. So let's go back to edit. Tags, again, is just the genre. Sharing is, as with movies, if you want to share it with other people, it's going to be showing labels. Poster is the same, and background is the same. You can add in a background if you want. Or if you don't add in one, it's just going to show the um, artist back background instead. And information is, again, just where the file stored. So let's go out, and let's go to the edit for the song. 
So again, pretty similar. Um, nothing really to change there. Tags, moods are basically what kind of mood the song gives off. And it's something that you're going to be able to search for in the future. So you can say that it's a calm song, you can say that it's a dance song or something like that. You can just put in whatever mood you think it's going to be. Again, for Plex Premium users, or Plex Pass users, sorry, it's going to pull down the mood automatically, but you can still add in your own ones if you're a Plex Free user. And information, again, as always, is the same. So that's it for music. Going into other videos, as you can see, they're basically the same as movies. Everything's the same here, although it's just for your content instead. In photos, um, if you go to, sorry, if you go to edit, as you can see, it's just basically the title, the year, the sort title, and if you want to put in a description as well as where it's stored. So those two are pretty easy. And now let's go into TV shows. And again, it's kind of like music. It has multiple settings. So let's go into The Simpsons. So under series, everything is pretty much the same as movies other than Banner and Advanced. So we're going to skip over everything other than those two. As you can see, they're all the same. So Banners show up in some Plex apps, but hardly any of them. So if you notice a Banner in your Plex app, you can add it, but it's barely in any of the Plex apps. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. Under advanced, there's quite a few settings, so let's go through all of them. So keep all episodes is if you want to keep all of the episodes being shown to, um, being shown within Plex. So you can set for all of them to be shown. You, you can set for five of them to be shown for three or for one. Or you can set for episodes from the last three days, um, last seven days or last 30 days. So that's up to you. If you want to not show all the episodes, then you can um, change these options here. Delete episodes after watching. You can set that to be after a day or after a week. Again, that's up to you. If you don't want the episodes to be on Plex anymore, after um, you've watched them, you can change that here. Seasons, again, library default is what, what the options are in the libraries. So for seasons by default, it's, to, it's set to show in library, but you can change it there. Episode sorting is by newest first. And for episode ordering, as you can see, it's not library default. Airing order is the um, order that it aired on TV and DVD order is the order in which it is on the on a DVD. So these are usually going to be the same, but in case they aren't, you can switch between them. So the difference between episode sorting and episode ordering is to do with episode sorting is going to change how the episodes are actually sorted. So if I do oldest first, then it, as you can see, if I go under here. As you can see, um, episode 20 is before episode 21, but episode ordering is to do with the names and what number is actually before the episode name. So that's nothing to do with the ordering. That actually just changes the name. It doesn't change in which order the episodes show up, if you get what I mean. If this is confusing, be sure to ask me down in the comments down below and I'll clear up any doubts for you. But for now, let's just save changes and go into this season. And as you can see, under here are the two episodes. So let's go and edit. And there's not really much under here. There's just a summary that you can do for the season if you want. And you can change the poster and you can change and you can add a background. Although if you don't add a background, again, it's just going to show the background for The Simpsons. And info is info. So that's about it. So that's about it for seasons. If we go into episode, um, it's just going to show um, a title, sort title, and all of that for the individual episode. And tags, you can put in the writers or, and the directors if you want. Um, as for posters, that's the poster that shows up right here. So you can change it if you want, or you can add your own. And same for backgrounds. And information is just where it's stored. So yeah, that's everything that you can edit when it comes to metadata within Plex. Again, if you've got any questions, be sure to ask me them down in the comments down below. Be sure to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more Plex tutorials coming out in the future as well as other technology videos. But yeah, for now, I'll see you all in the next video. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.